Okay, so I had a few things I wanted to talk about since we had the final press conference and the grand arrivals in Las Vegas yesterday and whatnot and whatnot and so forth. First of all, you know, I, 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 I like, you know, after I make a, a pick on a big fight, like, just we'll just use this here, like Plant Benavidez, like Ryan and Tank, you know, I often like, and usually I know who I, so most of the times I know who I'm, I'm probably leaning towards, but I do like to hear other people's opinions, you know, and what they have to say. Because as I always used to say, two, two pair of eyes is sometimes better than one, you know. And I listen to a lot of guys' uh, predictions. Irish Brian, Brian Harkin, Punch Perfect, guys I respect, Montero, Steve Kim, Lou DiBella, Malinaji, Chris Algieri, and even my own little crew, Mad Chad, Carlos Mendoza, Harkin, Dick Justice, DJ, 150. I, I like to listen to and soak in what everybody has to say. The guys who are more on the inside and the guys who are more part of my crew. You know, our crew, rather. Not my crew, our crew. You know, and I, I often like to soak a lot of that information. And along with the, 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 the ex-pros and some of the guys that are more on the inside, like I said, Malinaji and Ludabella and Al Jerry, et cetera, so forth. So, um, and I'll tell you this, my pick hasn't changed, not at all. I still think Loma's going to get him out of there late. Um, not at all, not, not at all. I've actually... Because of what I saw today at the press conference and yesterday, I'm actually more confident in picking Lomachenko now than I was before, as I've seen things unfold throughout fight week here. Now, we haven't seen the weigh-in yet, but I I I'm even more so, especially from when I saw them face off, and we're going to get into that in a minute. All right. So... I, first thing, the second thing I want to talk about is the remarks that Devin Haney's been making about Lomachenko's dirty tactics. Lomachenko is not a dirty fighter. He's trying to play mind games with them, with uh, with Loma, and you know those Eastern Europeans, they're mentally bricks. You can't break them boys mentally. Uzik, Paterbia, Bivol, Triple G, you know, Loma, you can't break them boys mentally. Provotnikov, even, Koval, you know, you can't break them boys mentally. So the mind games is out of the work. And it is ironic that the and, and hypocritical that the guy who clinched George Cambosos 473 times in their rematch hit on the break, did all that dirty shit, put him in headlocks, all of that crap, rabbit punched him is the one claiming the other guy's a dirty fighter. It's just hypocritical and, and dumb from Devin Haney. And it doesn't mean anything in the grand scheme of things. And I also want to point out, because I heard a lot of people bitching about Harvey Doc being the ref, pissing and moaning. Bro, Harvey Doc is a good referee. I'm going to go. They could have done a lot worse than Harvey Doc, bro. Believe me when I tell you that that is definitely... One of the better referees that they could have picked. It's not Tony Weeks. It's not Kenny Bayless. It's not Lawrence Cole. It's not Jane 80. It's none of the guys that we dislike. Like, but but some, some of you guys are going to bitch no matter who the referee was, bro. Like, let's just keep it real. So just to go over some of the rep fights that, that Harvey Doc has refed of recent memory. Baturbi of Joe Smith, let him scrap. Triple G Dedovinchenko, let him fight. Charlo Dedovinchenko, let him fight. Teofimo Cambosos, let him fight. Plant Durrell, we all saw what happened there. So this guy is definitely one of the better guys they could have picked, and I'll hear nothing more about it, okay? 
Now, the judges, who knows, bro? They have their nights. Cheatham and 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 Moretti and you know whoever whoever the third one is. But who knows with the fu- with the with the fucking judges? But the ref is is good money as far as I'm concerned. Um, there's one prediction I didn't put out there yet that I want to get to. Okay, and another thing is another thing I wanna I wanna um add. Is this size that everybody keeps putting so much emphasis on this supposed gigantic size difference that Haney has over Lomachenko, bro? And I'm telling you right now, it's nothing Lomachenko hasn't seen before. Especially when I've seen, especially when I saw them face off today. And I understand that Haney's gonna rehydrate up probably 10 or 15 pounds, but it's nothing he hasn't seen before with Luke Cam- Luke Campbell was taller than Devin Haney. Linares is taller than Devin Haney. Nakatani's taller than Devin Haney. And those guys, maybe not as long of a reach as Devin Haney, but pretty close, fellas. So this huge size difference that all these agenda pushers and guys that have been, not, not the guys that I talked to, but some of the guys that kind of been sold off and have turned into company men, I keep putting this emphasis on is bullshit, okay? This size difference is nothing he hasn't seen before, guys, all right? Next thing I want to mention, the body language of Devin Hayne. Now, from my years of being a, running around the streets and dealing with the people I dealt with, you had to have an eye for detail. If somebody was trying to pull something on you, if somebody was trying to set you up, if something didn't feel right or sound right, et cetera, so forth. That's why I always tell you guys that I'm very good at reading body language. Not only with when I used to box when I was younger, but with my shit in the streets too, because I was very, I, it didn't happen overnight. I wasn't born this way. I was made this way. You know, and with my years in the streets, you had to be very keen on if something doesn't feel right, if something doesn't sound right, if somebody's giving you that look that doesn't, you know, doesn't look right. I, I'm getting all those vibes from Devin Haney, bro. This is the second face-off they have. He hasn't taken his glasses off. He hasn't looked him in the eye like a freaking man, Okay. You know, I remember Mike Tyson saying in the one in the 2008 documentary, actually, as a matter of fact, I stare them, stare into their soul. If they're the first one to break the stare, I know I got them. And in both face offs, Haney broke the stare down. He's the one that turned away first. Okay, And that plus the glasses, plus the, you know. Guys, see, the media would like to have you believe that Loma's fighting an uphill battle, and I think it's a little bit of the opposite, which is why I'm picking Loma Jingle. Now, given it is a little bit personal for me, A, because I'm Italian and Eastern European, and I do have a cousin that's Ukrainian, and, you know, and plus all the negative shit that Bill Haney said to me a couple years ago about white and my heritage and my skin color and all that shit, so it is a little personal for me. So I'm admittedly a little biased. But, you know, his body language ain't there. And plus, he's already coming... Haney's already coming up with excuses about Loma being a dirty fighter, bro. Lomachenko is not a dirty fighter. And just like when they were locked... That video, that little short I posted yesterday of them walking in the lobby together and Haney's saying, you're a dirty fighter, you're a dirty fighter, you're a dirty fighter... Well, turn around and say that to his face, bro, if you got balls like that. Don't walk away, run away and start talking shit. Turn around and say it to his face. He's he's not looking him in the eye. He's not taking his glasses off. He's not saying this shit to his face. And that brings me to my next point. All that shit that Bill Haney and Devin Haney have talked over the last year 
ish year is because I know this has been going on for a few years, but specifically the last year ish, they've really been talking poorly on Loma. Oh, he never went to the Ukraine. He was hiding in Greece. He never did shit and helped his people. He never did none of that. He never did none of that. Now you're singing a different tune when he's standing five feet away from you at the fucking press conference, and you're saying, oh, well, I think we need to uh, commend Lomachenko for his valiant effort when his country needed him and all this. Like, singing a completely different tune, bro. You're hypocritical about the dirty tactic shit when you're the one that's the dirty fighter. You're calling him the dirty fighter. And all this animosity you had to him, all this shit you were talking about him, his people, his fans, like, all of it, has, you've completely changed your tune on it. So you know what that tells me? You motherfuckers are nervous, bro. All of that. They've completely done a 180 on all of that shit they were talking. They, they, they're not saying it to his face. Haney don't want to look him in the eye. He won't even take his glasses off. He's talking shit while he's running away. Like, it, it, man, the body language. I had to point that out, okay? Now... Last thing I'm going to tell you is this. You know, I take this. Uh, now, listen to what I'm saying to you. All right? Here's a lot can come from extra added incentive, especially if you're a real, genuine fighter like Lomachenko is. All right? Not a fake fighter, not Ryan Garcia. If you are a real gangster and a real warrior and a real soldier, that little bit of incentive, that little bit of added motivation can take you a long way, okay? Point to, to My premises on that point are this. A, he's the underdog. He hasn't been the underdog since he fought Gary Russell, as Aegis Clemus alluded to, right? B, all the shit that's going on for his country. He's not only doing it for him, for, for his dream, he's doing it for his family. He's doing it for his country who's going through hell right now. He's doing it for his people. And point C, this is his dream, his lifelong dream, and it's all right at his fingertips and it's probably going to be the last time he gets that opportunity. Again, that added in, especially if you're a real gladiator, and a real soldier, and a genuine badass, that shit can go a long way, take you a long way. If you're cut like that. See, if you're not cut like that, if you're a Ryan Garcia, or, 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 or a, a, a Jamal Charlo, it don't mean nothing, but if you're really cut like that, that add a, added incentive can take you a long way, bro. Ask Tim Bradley, if you don't believe me. Ask Tyson. They'll tell you the same thing. I'm telling you. Another last point. His contract with Bob Arum's up. He's got the referee on his side. You know... I know it's not the same fight. It's obviously not the two same fighters. It's obviously under different circumstances for Undisputed. It's a little bit bigger of a fight, obviously. But Plant Benavides, people were split down the middle on that one. It said Plant's going to build an early lead. And then he's going to get the shit kicked out of him in the second half of the fight. Is there a little similarity there? Oh, I think there is. Please be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. God bless you all. Have a beautiful night. Maybe I'll have a video tomorrow. It's Thursday. I, I had a busy day today. That's why I didn't do a stream. We're definitely doing a stream for the weigh-in, though. And we're definitely going to obviously do one for the fight, so... I don't know what I have going on tomorrow, but we shall see. Please be sure to hit the like and subscribe. And if you're feeling generous, hit the cash app to donate or drop the boy a super thank you or a super chat. God bless. And it's time, motherfuckers.